There's this wonderful quote that I always like repeating that patriarchy benefits men, but it oppresses everybody. If there is a young woman today who comes at home and says, I'm a feminist, you know, and I really want to uh, live my life in that, her mother would still today unfortunately say, but you still need to learn quickly. The worth of a boy, so to speak, is related to how well you do in your life. The marks that you get, the CTC like that you get once you get placed. But it's all numerical. Mm -hmm. Masculinity also has to coexist along with humanity. Masculinity is about being kind. It's not only about the patriarchal conditionings that uh, exist in the world. Everyone looks at young people as entitled and you know, okay, they're always on their phones. They're always looking down. The reason they look down, they find communities on these in social media platforms and you know, many different ways of people who understand them. When I was growing up, I don't think I was allowed fully to be a human being. I don't think I was allowed to cry. I was judged when Meet Nikhil Taneja, a dynamic force in the world of content creation. Nikhil has not only founded a platform aimed at helping the youth, but has also sparked conversations that matter. In this conversation, he opens up about championing mental health to redefining masculinity, his journey, and the impactful stories he's uncovered, including conversations with icons like Shah Rukh Khan. Join us for a thought-provoking conversation that transcends boundaries and explores the power of storytelling. Welcome to the Humans of Bombay show, Nikhil. Lovely to see you and lovely to see you after Be A Man, yeah. Like, I feel like I've seen you <laughs> enough and now I'm seeing you in person. So, how's it going? Well, I think even I've seen myself enough. <laughs> I'm also getting embarrassed because I opened the Instagram, uh, you know, explore page and then suddenly there's just, I see like, this is my show, this is my show, this is my show. So I'm also now getting, uh, I don't know if I'm getting used to it, but I think I've also, I think I need a detox from social media because I'm seeing myself too much. But uh, no, thank you for being, uh, thank you for having me here. I mean, I started by saying thank you for being here because that's my default. So thank you for having me here. It's nice to be on the other side. Yeah, it's nice. I mean, um, because I've seen I've seen your interviews and they get so intimate and they get so like <laughs> deep that yeah. you can just like relax a little bit and be like, okay, now I'm just Thank like you. answer. <laughs> I, I like that. I think that's a, that's a healthy change for me. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to start with something that you've said and yeah. I found very interesting that, uh, you know, you were raised by your mother and, uh, and your aunt in a certain way, which is why you have this, a certain level of emotional quotient, mm -hmm. the EQ that... Uh, you obviously discuss yeah. a lot. So talk to us a little bit about that. The formative yeah. years that translated into so many different mm. things into your life. Uh, right off the bat. <laughs> um, you know, I'm every time anyone I speak about my mother and Masi, I get uh, uh, I feel very, very grateful. I also get very emotional because uh, um, I've seen how hard they've worked. You know, uh, my father has always been at the office. He's always been working hard himself. Uh, but when you're growing up as a young boy, you know, you do feel the lack of uh, mm. co-parent. You feel the lack of a father being around. Uh, and my father just wasn't. It's it's much later, obviously, that you look back and say, you know, I understand. It's also patriarchy in many ways that forced him to just be outside of home. And like most young boys look up to their parents and mostly are always trying to be their fathers. Mm -hmm. Whereas I always used to look at my mother and be like, you know, I want to be her. Yeah. She's so thoughtful. She's so kind. She's so uh, gracious. She works so hard. I'm just, uh, and I just wanted to live a life where she would feel uh, proud of me. Like I think my, honestly, my, greatest moment in life so to speak was uh, uh, I was in Yashraj before this uh, before you were and uh, I had uh, just got a promotion and I was I was made GM over there and I'd got a cabin so uh, she came down she's, she lives in Bahrain so she came down to Bombay and uh, I just told her I want to take you to my office I got her mm -hmm. uh, to the office got her to sit to see my cabin, got her to sit in my chair and I took a picture of her. Cute. I was like, how are you feeling now? And then she's like, I'm feeling very proud. I said, that's, <laughs> I, I felt like, like a life goal yeah. had uh, uh, come true. So yeah, I'm, I'm really like emotional about the fact that I'm so grateful that I've had these two incredible women who have uh, made me the man I am today. Yeah. And that's such a sweet anecdote. <laughs> <laughs> You've had such an interesting beginning. And most, you know, most people go through a lifetime where there are milestones and you hit those highlights and those key points. You started at 19 when you interviewed <laughs> Shah Rukh Khan. I started much earlier at 14. Yeah, yeah. And you, but you interviewed him at that yeah, point yeah, on yeah, KBC. Yeah, yeah. And um, I think that that, that, that 
shift in momentum when something this important happens to you young is yeah. inevitable. I've seen yeah. it. I've seen it in many people. I've also noticed it in my own journey. <laughs> what was that like? As a young person, I was always to kind of told to sit down, you know, and just told that, uh, uh, like, I, I, an actual instance that has happened with me. I'd interviewed, uh, so. I'd interviewed all of these stars for Khalish Times, which is in the yeah. Middle East, uh, even before uh, I had joined HT. Uh, Shah Rukh Khan had interviewed at 20, as you said, 1920. Um, once I joined again, the first year of my career, I had a really supportive editor, Khalid Mohammed, who would give me these opportunities saying that you've done good work and you, you're good at what you do. Go out and meet people. So mm. I met like Salman Khan and Shahid Kapoor and Amir Khan. I mean, I didn't met a bunch of folks initially only. But then once he you know, uh, moved on from uh, there. The other folks in the team would just, just one day came to me and said, you can't do this anymore. We said, why? I said, why? He said, because you're too young. I said, wait, I was not too young for the previous editor. Interview, yeah. And how interview. am I suddenly too young? They just said, no, you know, uh, it's embarrassing when we send a 21-year-old for the interview of a, uh, you know, older person and a big star. Like, how is that embarrassing? What, what's embarrassing about that? Isn't it a cool thing that, you know, yeah. But, uh, I mean, they would just tell me, we have had complaints that you're too young. I was like, what does that even mean? Like, <laughs> that makes no my sense. My age is a defining yeah, that, factor. Exactly. <laughs> like, apparently, I mean, this is what they would tell me. Apparently, one interview, uh, one, I mean, I, I don't even know if it's true or not, if they're making up stories, but one of the Bollywood actors that I've interviewed tell, told that, why did you send a kid, you know, when I was expecting an adult? So I was like, I don't know how to, I don't know what to say to that. Yeah, like, uh, um, <laughs> how has this suddenly become yeah, relevant? Yeah, this is to say that when I was, it's, I still can't believe, and I see that happen even now in many, many places, that you are judged not on uh, what your ability or your talent, but on uh, uh, your age and your level of experience. And I, I don't deny that experience is important, but I feel like there's something so incredible about you know, and the energy and passion that you have when you're young. Absolutely. And people putting that down, people telling that you're not enough, people saying that you need to grow up before, you know, you deserve an opportunity. Mm. I just found all that always to be unfair and unkind. Yeah. And, uh, and as I found myself in positions of privilege and power, wherever I had the opportunity, I'd always then try to give it to other young people around me because I didn't get it when I had to really fight for it. So I don't want the team around me, the folks around me to fight for these opportunities. So I'm always there to, uh, I mean, you guys literally started as a platform to do that for young people. So yeah. Yeah, and the the trajectory was interesting, right? From uh, MTV, uh, where you just said that this yeah. was the 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 setback that actually gave you the job yeah. <laughs> with MTV. Yeah, of course, yeah. then you went on to VRF, yeah. like you were mentioning earlier, and then decided to grapple into entrepreneurship yeah. with Via Yuva. Yeah. Two questions here. The first is. Uh, why entrepreneurship? Because, uh, <laughs> and I find this question extremely interesting because uh, most people yeah. don't bite it, yeah. right? Like it's, it's yeah. and for good reason. Yeah. Like it's, uh, it's <laughs> tough. It gives you sleepless nights. Of course, it's worth it on so many different fronts, but it's, it's overall known to be yeah. a rather taxing profession, Joyce. Yeah. So um, why entrepreneurship and why did you decide to make this move? Uh, the simple question, a simple answer. I am stupid. I was naive. I still have, I feel. Uh, I did not know what I was signing up for. Uh, if I had known and people asked me, would you go back and do this? I would say no. <laughs> you know, I like I now recognize that I would like the thing that always comes to my mind when I compare having a job and having entrepreneur. And I'm, this is not to uh, dissuade uh, anybody from taking this up. If you're passionate, please go for it. I'm just telling my experience that when you have a bad day at your job, you know, you can take a day off. You can, or whatever, you know, you can go for a holiday. If you don't like it too much, you can just quit. And you have a bad day at your company. You only have to fix it. Yeah? yeah. You know, it is, you have a terrible time. You have a terrible phase. You are only responsible of turning it around and then you have to first you know you don't have that time to even be kind to yourself mm -hmm. so uh, so yeah I mean I didn't know <laughs> the simple answer that it would be this hard it is the hardest thing I've done in my life and uh, uh, and it continues being hard every day uh, it is it does get easier absolutely and you know fortunately now again I have a very good team and a good support system in that sense that really takes uh, care of a lot of the responsibilities now uh, so that I can come here and be with the likes of you and have these conversations um, but uh, why 
began it uh, i i feel like i did at that time i just felt like i didn't have an option so to speak right uh, and like i used to teach at a college in jehan college in mumbai for 7 years i was teaching there and i would uh, hear my students whether it is anxiety whether it is depression whether it is you know uh, drug abuse whether it is uh, um, violence they see at home you know all kinds of issues that you would hear and i was in yashraj at that time and uh, um, while there i was heading content and development for y films which is the youth wing of yashraj films and i'd have like all of these writers coming and pitching all these youth stories to me and every story i mean i just the, the joke became that writers in bombay think that young people do one of two things either love or murder because those are the only two categories of stories i was pitched and sometimes it was both so it is love and murder together i'm like wow what a unique you know genre mashup you know so and i'd always just be like you know there is so many stories of young people and not just talk, talking about mental health stuff right it's also about overcoming the obstacles that they face the stuff that they go through in their lives and i just not see it reflected anywhere if we if we genuinely listen to young people and create something that makes them feel seen heard represented they will show up yeah um and i tried doing a lot more of that at yashraj but yashraj was also going through uh, a lean phase at that time a lot of things were flopping so um i a lot of the ideas that i had of what i wanted to how i wanted to build uh why films just weren't feasible at that time mm. you know honestly yashraj has been the best working environment i've ever been in it just it's just sad that we the timing was off right. you know uh, i and i was i kind of uh, developed clinical clinical anxiety at that time because uh, um, i was just at a place where i'd done a lot of these big shows and hit shows and then suddenly for a very long time and yashraj had nothing to do because uh, the larger ecosystem in yashraj was trying to figure how to fix the studio mm -hmm. you know and i was obviously a very small part of it so i took the call to quit uh, and uh, give some time to my mental health to myself uh, took a sabbatical from my career and uh, and the more i would think of what i wanted to do it was always like a you know this ikki guy of i want to really work with young people and and find a way that we can listen to them more and my skill set of being a producer you know a storyteller entertain i mean you know entertainment executive how can i bring all of this together so anand amrit for my friends we spoke and then this idea came out it was actually amrit who suggested that everything that you want to do sounds like a company in a trade off i think that the impact created is far outweighing I mean, the absolutely. cons so uh, i think it was a good decision I'm very grateful. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I I do curse Amrit under my breath sometimes yeah. that for <laughs> you know uh, swindling me into mm. doing this. But uh, but no, of course you know the impact that you know Touchwood we've been trying to uh, create at uh, Yuva uh, has been pretty incredible. Mm. I'm I'm very grateful. Yeah, which brings me to my second question is, what are some of the insights you have into the youth Ooh. of India? So many, Karishma. Oh wow. Uh, you know I think. the the most important and again i was talking about uh listening right so there's this and i've always and you know i think this has existed with every generation i just feel it gets exacerbated in this one mm -hmm. uh everyone looks at young people as entitled and you know okay they're always on their phones they're always looking down they're always like the reason they look down isn't that they um isn't that they are entitled and they don't want to talk to anyone it's that when they look down they find communities on these in social media platforms and you know many different ways of people who understand them who care for them who don't judge them they look down because the moment they look up they recognize that the entire world and all the adults around them are judging them mm -hmm. for being a generation that is clearly a lot more evolved in the way they think they have a, they've had more in, access to information to the internet uh their concepts of life and uh, you know understanding uh their empathy question quotient mm. is is far more than that of the adults around them right and so they're constantly judged you know if there is a young woman today who's you know um comes at home and says i'm a feminist you know and i really you know want to uh, live my life in that a mother would still today unfortunately say but you still need to learn cooking you know you can be a feminist great but you will need to learn cooking uh, because that's what a woman needs to learn to be able to uh, get married 
and uh, i feel like everyone should learn cooking yeah. but the reason to learn cooking is only for the marriage part of it right and when the girl argues and says no and these are actual stories that i've heard from young women right and young people when women says no i don't want to do this then she's told but when i was in the kitchen cooking the mother will ask why did you not tell me about feminism <laughs> and which is a very fair question because when so see the world i have been told to live a certain way that you know uh, you marry this kind of person you uh, this is your sexuality uh, you either as a boy you only do engineering and mba and what not these are all concepts and constructs that you just didn't know how to fight because there was no information mm. like chetan bhagat also did not exist for me growing up yeah. he happened when i went into college mm. and then i was like i mean i could at least use him as an example earlier had i known yeah. uh, so i feel like uh, my generation our generation was we were rebels as every generation is but we didn't have a cause because when my my mother would tell me you can't do engineering you have to do engineering and i would just be like no she'll be like why and i was like i don't know <laughs> i just don't want to do it so i i would fight but i didn't have like what would i do instead yeah. i didn't have the other options but for this generation you know when the parents ask them what do you want to do there's a list yeah. the problem is the choice now it means i choose and i choose kya karu but the parents don't understand and i feel like this generation understands that their parents don't understand mm. and i feel like the burden of empathy is on this generation which really puts a lot of pressure on their mental health mm. so they're all going through something they're mm. all looking for these safe spaces where they can just be themselves express freely without judgment uh, not be looked down upon and which is why there's so many micro communities that are coming up with all of these young people finding these uh, spaces where they can belong Correct. and i feel like your community is a community like that hopefully you are and now even be a man here is a micro community where you know certain people can feel seen and be like mm. you know okay this i understand yeah. you know i have been struggling with the masculinity so be a man here is something that i can uh, relate to mm. whereas I didn't have these uh, places, yeah. or you know, I'm, I'm sure you didn't when mm. growing up. Yeah, on that topic, there are so many different nuances that you touch upon via via Yuva. Yeah. One of them, obviously, which is translated to the show, but outside of that, as a theme, is masculinity, yeah. which which you were just discussing. So, what is the definition of masculinity for you? Um, I, you know. So for me masculinity even before we talk about masculinity I just want to talk about humanity I just feel like all human beings uh have this humanity inside of them mm -hmm. that we are not allowed to tap into or express because of the gender boxes we are put in yeah. right even before a boy can become a human being he is told to become a man and I find that very unfair I feel like when I was growing up I don't think I was allowed fully to be a human being right I don't think I was allowed to like most boys to cry because I was judged when I was cry uh, I was told that you are tum to ladki jaise ho abhi bhi bolte hain logon ko ki tum ro rahe ho to ladki jaise as if like crying is a bad thing and as if girls crying is you know is something to be ashamed of mm -hmm. I was always told that a a the worth of a boy so to speak is related to how well you do in your life mm. you know the marks that you get the ctc like that you get once you get placed the uh, you know the ranks that you have the designation that you have the amount of money that you get in a job all of that the number of houses that you have at some point in time the number of cars you have it's all numerical mm. it all comes down to numbers yeah. you know your your worth is always seen as almost a return on investment that mm. your parents have invested in you how much can you grow that so a boy is almost seen as an asset you mm. know and uh, and if the person and the boy is not performing then becomes a liability mm. and it is and in all of this i don't think at any point of time a boy is you know allowed to tap into their humanity mm. and i feel like this is true for all genders you know uh, and i think that as much as you know we have uh, uh, women have always been the more oppressed and more marginalized community but also because of that there has been so much conversation around that like this is wonderful quote that i that i always like repeating that patriarchy benefits men but it oppresses everybody mm. and we don't recognize the oppression that patriarchy has done to men you know uh while we are now in a certain subsection of society i won't say it's everywhere but at least in a certain subsection of society we are now 
talking about how patriarchy affects women mm. and women are fighting back men don't even know that this is something to be fought back on men don't even they never got the so to speak we never got the memo yeah. that you know like humko yahi bola gaya tha ki once you lead this life what happens at the end of it once you get the money once you get the designation once you get the job then you will find a partner who will uh, who is going to marry you with the intention of you having kids mm. and then that partner is going to work on the kids and you have to work on the family and the money right so every boy has grown up thinking this uh, when the boy had a hobby they said don't do the hobby you focus, focus on, on your yeah, you know your marks because your job is going to be the breadwinner of the family correct when they said mujhe ye stream nahi chahiye i don't want to do engineering i maybe want to do arts or i want to do commerce i want to do whatever so no tumhe karna padega engineering or you have to do mba or whatever it is because that's how you're going to get mm. where you have to get in your career and then when they've gotten there today mm. now they're having conversations with women where women are just like but i don't want to have a kid why should i have a kid i also earn you know you don't have to earn only and i am not only going to be the nurturer in the family you can also be a nurturer but ladko to pata hi nahi nurturing kya hoti hai humko to dikha hi nahi gaya i didn't get a hug from my father growing up most boys haven't most boys don't know what it means to be the nurturer because the woman is always seen as the weaker sex yeah. and the masculine idea is that you have to uh, be like your fathers and just go out and work you don't get to spend spend time with your child you don't get to uh, actually have fatherhood i mean just the idea that when you have parental leave mm-hmm. women get a certain amount of leave and men don't yeah. and it's not of course women deserve that leave because you know they, physically their bodies have produced a child but by saying that men don't even get that much my cousin just had a child mm-hmm. 13 days later he's had to come back to work 13 days that's all he's got to be with his, with his child you know uh, while of course the woman has 3 months and those 3 months are mandated by the company mm-hmm. but the company say the father has to come back why because you know fatherhood is not considered as important because it's not considered as human mm-hmm. and i think that's what i have learned over a period of time what my definition has to be masculinity also has to coexist along with humanity okay. masculinity is about being kind it's about being gentle it's not only about the patriarchal conditionings that uh, exist in the world it is about finding your own version yeah. of what it means to be a man and i think what it means to be a human more often than that uh, it is something that even i continue struggling with it is something that i see a lot of men struggling with but i just feel like we don't have enough conversation and just you asking this question now is so important for me mm. you know on a show like yours for us to and honestly that's just the i'm the happiest that this show has come out because the idea of the show was not just the fact that you hear um you know these incredible men talking about their masculinities but the fact that you start having that conversation yeah the conversation of the gentleness of masculinity the positivity of masculinity about men wanting to be more uh, than uh, men wanting to be more than they have been allowed to be in yeah. society and then recognizing that you know the burdens can be shared yeah. you know when if a woman is also earning that means you don't have to earn as much yeah. it also means that you can take time to have self care you know and it also means that the woman does not always have to be the nurturer she can go out and you know kick ass at her work while you you know if you want to can be at home and cook Correct. and and take care of your child you know and be there for your child like you never got from your parents so i think the balance uh, and equilibrium that we don't understand i think we need to have that conversation it's not a bad thing to be uh, you know gentle i think it's a wonderful thing and more men need to recognize that yeah in fact i just posted a reel i don't yeah. know if you saw it it was about uh, what is it what is the best and most attractive part of a man yeah. and i said that the most attractive quality of a man is his ability to be soft yeah. and they stirred a huge debate <laughs> on the internet the comment section is fun <laughs> you must go read it yeah. um, but i absolutely agree i think that the concept and the domain of an alpha male yeah where an alpha is just boxed as being yeah. this strong warrior yeah. um uh, almost uh, uh all encompassing yeah. i'm going to protect and i'm going to provide yeah. uh needs to be twisted a little it can also yeah. mean that you're kind and you're soft yeah. and you're vulnerable um and i think that that the alpha male yeah. definition kind of needs to be twisted so that young boys who are hoping to grow up and be alpha male yeah. also know that it's not just those aspects there yeah. are so many different nuances to that concept no, you're so right karishma the fact that i mean you can be an alpha male and still uh, have a gentleness to you mm. i mean you look at the rock dwayne johnson you know he's the most alpha 
person i would say in in one of the most alpha people in the world right he's the rock he is one of the hollywood's biggest earning superstars yeah. people want him to run for president and he has spoken so openly about depression mm. he speaks so openly about being a girl dad he puts out videos where his girl where his daughters are painting on his face yeah. you know he is and he speaks about that he speaks about how important it is for men to uh, embrace the the soft side the feminine side of yeah. themselves because everyone has yeah like there is no set gender norms yeah. uh, in that in that sense and i think that that's coming more to the front with people who we idolize right like even if you see a virat kohli show this is a oh very God. soft side to him uh it, like you mentioned uh, the rock who yeah. is like one of the toughest so so called characters but there's so many other men who are now yeah. showcasing this pretty you know openly rambo i uh, sylvester stallone mm. you know when he made rocky and he made rambo the things that make the thing that makes both those films so great is not just the fact that this is a guy who was always fighting and fighting and fighting in life it because in every every uh you know part of the franchise every single movie also showcases the down also mm-hmm. showcases the low the loneliness rambo in i forget cd the uh, film 1 or film 2 after killing a bunch of people you know he, this he was a you know soldier suffering from ptsd after killing a bunch of people there is a whole scene five seven minute scene where he's just crying yeah. his heart out where he's just like you know i mean and he talks about the ptsd of seeing pe- other men die around him mm. and we love those films not just because they were act- such alpha men but because those men were able to showcase those sides of themselves that's what we connected at right. but we feel ashamed of saying that you know that's my favorite part of the film uh, because that is actually the most human and those most uh, vulnerable part this obviously this concept and this ideology has led to the show which yeah. is be a mania where yeah. you've spoken to like i was mentioning the the faces of um uh, uh very very uh, successful men Yeah. in their respective domains uh you had a very interesting conversation with karan johar about sensitivity and uh, you know how it was uh, for him growing up and his journey uh, talk to us a little bit about that conversation and which will lead me to the second question sure. uh i mean again just extremely grateful to karan uh, for not only agreeing to uh, come and be part of this conversation but also for trusting that whatever we speak of will always be put out in a certain way mm. uh, as an example when the episode was ready you know and he's i actually sent him that episode i said karan please see it and let me know here's the teaser here's the episode if there's anything you feel you want to take out and he sent this wonderful voice note to me a long one where he said nikhil i've come on your show because i trust you and uh, uh, i wouldn't you know want to if you feel that this is good to go out then you know i am happy good. with yeah. whatever you put out and uh, and and i think everyone all the guests came with that intent when we started the show honestly i think the biggest change in my head was when when i started uh, this conversation mere dimag mein ye tha ki we are doing this for younger folks right we are doing this in some way doing this for yuva it's a yuva show so be a man yaar will help yuva it will help young people who watch the show it's only when everyone started coming on that couch that i realized it's also for them yeah i didn't know that karan johar would need that space as, as much as i need it or as much as the younger folks would be watching need it mm-hmm. i didn't think that vicky at the end of the show would come and you know again give me a hug and tell me that uh, uh nikhil thank you for giving me this space cuz i have not had this conversations in my family yeah. forget having with friends when kisi se ye baat nahi ki hai and and you recognize and karan was very much in that same zone right he he did not hold back he at no point um told me you cannot ask this or you cannot uh, uh, we cannot talk about this i think he's also on a journey you can see that even with uh, the new coffee where he is uh, recognizing that it's okay for him to put out his emotions it's okay for him to bear his soul and uh, the fact that he spoke about uh, being bullied for being seen as effeminate or being called you know a pansy i feel like we need to allow these spaces to mm. no matter who it is karan johar might be karan johar but he is also human yeah. just as much as you and i are correct and uh, if we talk to these folks as human beings uh, versus talking to them 
as constructs and brands and images you know i think they also really appreciate that and use those spaces to talk about things that they may have always wanted to talk about but never got the opportunity to yeah so um grateful that these conversations are actually coming to the fore because like i said you know that it's very important to set that um premise via the via people or men who yeah. the youth idolize yeah. saying that okay now it's okay to be that vulnerable it's okay like every time virat kohli does something with anushka i think that the the world is just I like oh my god it's so refreshing and it's so it's so okay to be this in love you, you know, know with your partner can you imagine that and we've grown up unfortunately karishma and the more you think of it right you've grown up on these whatsapp jokes which make fun of your wife yeah you've grown up on these whatsapp whatsapp jokes which always talk about are uh, you know i can't come out because my wife is at home <laughs> or uh, you know uh, when there's something good that you'll always be like it's my success when mm. there's always something difficult that's happening it, the joke is that there is a the wife. is the wife yeah. over here because of which it's almost strict, a, yeah. yeah who's strict who doesn't like me who's who who's like, doesn't, doesn't want to have fun yeah, yeah. doesn't want me to have fun who doesn't allow me my space or whatever it is and those are the running jokes that you have and kahin na kahin na wo kahaniyan those are stories that we start believing mm. you know i feel like even women after a point of start believing that is my role correct because that is the role that you constantly say so much that way you know the tutu mai mai that you kind of see in all the serials and you know that have that we have grown up watching of of the uh, husband and wife almost being at loggerheads with each other yeah because there are stories and and roles we feel that we've needed to play Correct. and then we start playing those roles so that we fit better in society and then we become those people yeah. then we actually become those people yeah. and i feel like it's so beautiful to see someone like a virat kohli at that level yeah. just changing that yeah changing the narrative the narrative is yeah. i mean what a <laughs> what an incredible and and it comes from the fact that every time he was going through a lean phase people used to talk about anushka yeah. and you can see that every century every time he does something well he looks at her and thanks her <laughs> because that's what it means to be a partnership, a partnership yeah. that's what it means to have a companion Correct. you know who's been there in your lean phases and who's when you are doing well it is them that you need to credit as much as yourself because you cannot if you're in a partnership relationship you cannot attribute all the success to yourself i can't have been who, where i am today if it wasn't for my wife yeah. you know i cannot have been there is no chance that if i wouldn't the amount of space the amount of love the amount of uh, time that she's given me mm. to pursue the passions that i have in my life and i hope i've also been there for yeah. her in the same way but there is like one of my favorite shows is brooklyn 99 mm. you know and and the reason for that is jake peralta you know as so it's a comedy we all love it and you know jake peralta in in that is always talking about how much he loves amy and you know it's and so he sweet. does it in yeah. this funny way you know but it's never making fun of the wife it's always just talking about oh god i love her so much you know <laughs> oh god it's so going to be so difficult for me and even uh, um, i forget the name of uh, the the sergeant um, but uh, uh, you know he again he was, he was this is this you know tough tough guy and he has these two daughters and he constantly just cries <laughs> about how much i love my daughters so you know and yeah. those are the ways i think you've normalized a show like that you know a a a a human being like virat they are kind of showcasing the world that it's okay to be these kind of men yeah. who worship your families who love them who adore them and uh, uh, who accept that love in return as well yeah. so uh, hmm. yeah i hope i hope we can have more such examples yeah um, which brings me to my next segment you know interesting that like i was mentioning earlier that my my reel on alpha men being soft had like <laughs> i think 8000 9000 comments something somewhere on so it's like a big debate going yeah. on uh, just generally in the comments not that i've engaged but it's happening yeah. um is that the world of digital plays such an important yeah. role and so many varying different messages right so um because you've been in this space and you've predominantly worked with the youth yeah. uh these are quick tips so yeah. like just really quick sure. um bullet points sure. for people that they can kind of actionably take some steps yeah. if these scenarios were to happen okay right i'm just telling you in advance i'm going to be really bad at this <laughs> i'm very bad at doing things quickly i'm always <laughs> great at doing them at length no, but i'm going to do my best no we ask for quick tips because we we're keeping yeah. attention span in mind no no i i i know why we do it <laughs> i just telling you i am very bad at it but i'm going to do my best okay cool okay how can one deal with trolls um 
recognize that as much as they don't know your story mm-hmm. you don't know theirs so don't take it personally it's not about you it's about them okay I did how, well. How I did, did well there. Yeah, yeah, you did. Okay, so I was yeah, giving validation. Just, no, I'm just saying like that. I, I managed to do it in like two sentences. Okay. Not bad. I'm patting my own back right now. Yeah. <laughs> how does one deal with comparisons with people just by seeing what is posted on social media? Yeah. Um, by realizing that in between all the stories that you see, there are many stories that are being lived that you know nothing of. Hmm. we put up the stories that we want the world to know of which are stories of happiness and joy but we are afraid of sharing those stories that we are living which could be about sadness or failures that we are always uh, scared of putting out so recognizing that those stories you know nothing about as much as you know the stories that you watch mm. deal with cyber bullying um i think it's i think the either block anybody who is uh, being abusive to you you mm. should not have to take anybody's nonsense mm. uh, your mental health matters a lot more than anything else uh, and wherever it gets traumatic please reach out to authorities don't take it lightly yeah. uh, there are you know i also think that there is a little bit of recognition of who you are and who this person is so mm. in case you are somebody who has a lot of followers or has a lot of uh, or is much older than the person doing this also sometimes let it go mm. because uh, you putting your followers on them is also going to be an uh, bullying them in return so you know don't fight bullying with bullying Correct. you know either just block and move on or or report to authorities if it gets very serious hmm and how do you deal with social media addiction uh i feel <laughs> very a lot um i think it's an i think i think it's an ever evolving understanding uh i don't think we had the tools for this earlier mm-hmm. we were the first generation to even be on social media right so the evolving the understanding of what is good and bad is still evolving i think it's important to take breaks mm-hmm. it's important every single time you catch yourself scrolling till late in the night and yeah. not sleeping enough do those detoxes and then and and also be kind to yourself that you are going to fail at those detoxes also and it's okay yeah and it's okay you know mm-hmm. as long as you recognize that this is not just your entire life but a part of it yeah i'm going to end um this amazing i i i've gotten so many insights from this <laughs> session uh, with a very imperative question also something that you speak about and yeah. i know that we are uva stands for mental health yeah. um what advice would you give people who are struggling with their yeah. mental health especially yeah. the youth um yeah. in the context of everything that's happening right like yeah. whether it's comparison on social media failures yeah. career choices everything that we we've yeah. spoken about leading up to now yeah So I have two kinds of advices. You know, earlier I used to have only one, and now I have another. As uh, I have gotten to know young people a little bit more over the last few years, one of course, reach out for help. You know, um, it's okay to be kind to not just everyone around you, but also to yourself. We are quick to talk about empathy for others, but forget that we also deserve it. Yeah. You know, uh, that when when. if you might be going through something i might actually be the person who and i think we have that awareness now where i might reach out and say do you need me but if i am going through something i judge myself only saying like i don't think anybody want would want to help me i think we need to change those ideas if you are comfortable with being there for others recognize that they are also going to be happy to be there for you so be kind to yourself don't judge yourself reach out for help uh, and and don't be afraid of uh, speaking up about it because the more you speak about it the more you normalize it the more you normalize it the the, the easier it gets mm. so that's my first thing be kind to others as well as to yourself the there is i would say <laughs> for the last few years another advice that i've started giving young people that not everything is a mental health issue as well mm-hmm. we need to recognize the the fact that it's a spectrum right mental health is a spectrum earlier there were no definitions for it yeah. earlier mm-hmm. even you know when you were actually really sla- uh, sad your parents would just be like it's okay be happy it's a choice yeah. you know uh and now the thing is that we call every emotion on the spectrum 
using the same analogies mm-hmm. you know even if we have nervous we call it anxiety yeah. even we are a little upset we call it depression uh and sometimes it becomes self fulfilling where we start believing those ideas that if i just if i have kind of had a small failure and i'm not again comparing uh, mental health traumas i'm just saying that i think we as a society are now getting to caught up uh in giving labels to to our identities mm. uh and starting to believe them beyond a point of time the like there's something vishnu said in this beautiful vishnu kaushal in in my uh, in one of the episodes of bm and bm anyar which i just think such a beautiful insight right he said we always say it's okay to not be okay but i want to say that it's also okay to be okay yeah. that you need to get beyond the <laughs> not okay yeah. to a place where you're better yeah. and the the more we only talk about how it's okay to not be okay we are not allowing or uh, ourselves to get to the point where we get better mm-hmm. so yes the first advice is if you're going through something speak about it go to a therapist go to a professional talk to a friend talk to somebody who will understand and and accept that you're going through something at the same time don't hold on to it don't feel that this is part of my identity now you can move away from it you can get to a better place so allow yourself also not to get caught up in these labels and get to a place where your mental health should not mental health should not always just be seen as a bad thing mm-hmm. when we talk about physical health when you're talking about fitness you're not talking about you know the bad parts of physical health but when you talk about mental health you're only talking about the negative aspects of it mm. no mental health can also be a good thing yeah. that i have great mental health self care is mental health uh, being there for yourself experiencing joy is mental health recognize recognize that parts of your life and your mental health as much as you recognize the others so that's something that now i've just started telling other folks because i see that we're getting caught up in the labels a lot and not allowing ourselves to get to a place where we are mentally in a yeah. good place yeah I think that's some good advice especially the second one because yeah. it's not spoken about enough. Yeah. But thank you so much for doing this with us and um I've learned a lot got <laughs> a lot of insights into masculinity. Um and I'm really excited for BM and YR season 2. Um, thank you. And I think a lot of our audience <laughs> would also be excited. But thank you so much for doing this yeah. and I wish you all the best. No thank you uh, Karishma I've always uh, I think I've loved what you've built over the last many 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 years I've been following uh, your page since it launched and uh, um, you know you've known that I've been a supporter of the work that you do and uh, it's it's so good that you've always try to bring out these perspective of human beings that we don't really get to hear about much so yeah i'm really grateful that i've got the opportunity to sit in front of you and have talk about my story <laughs> and yeah it's a it's a pretty cool thing for me so thank you for having me here thank you thank you so much thank you, thank you for being the best community and we'll see you in the next one